Matthew chapter 18, verse 1, down through verse 14. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Okay? Little children are special in God's sight. Look at verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast in, into hell fire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if, it, and if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish." Okay, now I read all those scriptures for a reason. Little children are very, very, very special in God's sight. So if Satan has people that follow him, who are they going to go after? Little children. Uh, that's why a lot of the television programming, you get that one? Programming is pointed at small children. And the devil knows he wants to go after those little children. He wants to get those little children. Now, here's the point I need to make. Back to verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. It's better for that to happen than what? What's it comparing it to? It's better to be drowned in the depth of the sea than... goes down through verses 8 and 9. To be cast into hellfire. God has a very special punishment planned for these people that molest children. So... Understanding how much God loves little children and how much He wants them to be protected, whose side do you think God going to? Who do, whose side do you think God will be on if you yourself, as a Christian, stand against this evil that goes on? If God be for us, who can be against us? You see, you say, well, well, brother, yeah, but what about the police? I don't care about the police. Let's just get real controversial here for a minute. If the police are doing wrong and they're involved in covering up for these child molesters, you as a Christian have no responsibility to listen to them and follow them. Oh, we're here for your children. No. No. I'll, stay, I'll take my stands with God. You see... The problem with modern-day Christianity is people have gotten away from the power that we once had. The Bible talks about people that not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. There's power. Understand something, Christian. You are part of Christ's body. We are connected, literally. We, the Bible says we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have power. But our power only comes, number one, through true salvation... Not false conversion out there like most of professing Christianity. Again, that's why it's so powerless and anemic. We have power, first of all, through true conversion. Secondly, through this book. Do you believe the words that you read? You say, well, yes, I, I think the Bible has some good... Okay, do you read verse 6 there? Matthew 18, verse 6, do you believe it? Do you believe that God is able to take care of these perverts out there? Or will you uh, cower and say, well... I don't really want to say much of it, like most of the preachers do, that are worried about their career. I'm not worried about my career. 
I'll take stands for children. And I'll tell these wicked perverts, and you listen to me, you stinking Jesuits or Masons or whoever else you are, and I know you watch my channel. I know, I know, I know. You're going to burn in hell, in the fires of hell, for all of eternity. All of eternity. Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. You think you're getting away with it. You got your little power structure there and everything else. Let me tell you something. You can't touch me and you can't touch a Christian until God gives you permission. And you're going to burn in the fires of hell. I can't come out and do anything to you. I understand that. You have your little buddies and all your little system in place and everything else. But let me tell you something. You can't get away from God. And my purpose as a preacher of this book this King James Bible. My purpose is to let as many Christians know about you perverts out there as possible and get Christians praying and get them back to the power of the Scriptures, the power of a right relationship with Jesus Christ so that we as people can say, we're going to pray and get you damned to hell. Dead and then damned to hell. Say it that way. I'm going to show you how to do it today. We're going to fight this thing with spiritual weapons. See, because the worst thing that you can do as a Christian is go out and fight this thing with physical weapons. Because then they say, well, look, Christians are attacking the police, you know, and stuff like this, and they're attacking and whatever else. Don't fight it with physical weapons. We fight with spiritual weapons. The sword of the Spirit. Let's get into this a little bit more. Genesis chapter 18. Say, oh, I don't know, Brother Brian, they got things all out there. You know, they can, they can get away with murder. That's what they want you to think. Genesis chapter 18, verses 23 through 25. And here you have the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 20, it says their sin is very grievous. And it wasn't in hospitality. They were pervert sodomites. And sodomites will all eventually become pedophiles. Okay, verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? I just don't understand. Why would God allow children to be molested? He must be an awful God. No, you see, God allows free will. And so instead of you, if you've gone through this thing as a child, instead of you saying, you know what, I hate God because of what He allowed to happen to me. No, come and say, I hate the people that did this thing to me, and I want to see God's wrath be brought upon them and see the system stopped. So I'm going to do what this book says. I'm going to get saved. And I'm going to live according to the Scriptures. I want the power of God in my life. I want that power that comes from a right relationship with the Lord through His Word. And then we'll see our enemies be brought down. Okay? That's what it's all about. The judge of all the earth will do right. In other words, is what I'm saying. Go to Second Chronicles. In your Old Testament there. If you have to pause it looking up in the uh, index because you're newly saved, that's fine. Try to get these videos done quickly. So, Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 5. Let's start there. And he said, Judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Therefore now let, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. you got to love that one. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. You had the Levites, the Levitical priesthood in the Old Testament. 
But now in the New Testament, there's a priesthood of believers. I said, well, that was a teaching of the Reformation. I saw somebody, you know, that's, that's a teaching of the Reformation. That's not New Testament. Oh, yes, it is. The Bible says that we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ, ministers of the gospel, men and women. All right? doesn't mean that females should be preachers or things like that. I understand that. In the assembly of the saints, the women are to keep silent. They're not supposed to have leading, you know, authoritative positions. But women have equal authority when it comes to saying, this is what the Bible says. They can judge just like a man can judge. The lost world out there. You better believe it. Don't think when it says, you know, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man but to be in silence. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, I think it is. Don't say, well, then that's the women can't judge a man and stuff that's lost. Oh, no, no. It's talking about when the assembling of the saints happens. See? But when it comes to saved women looking at the lost world and stuff like that, you have every bit as much right and power and duty to judge lost people as a man does. Right? Very important to understand that. But you see, we are supposed to judge things. Say, so can you show me scripture? Sure. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Back in the Old Testament. Now let's go to the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Slow bookmark thing there. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. We are supposed to judge all things. So, when a Christian keeps silent about child molestation that goes on, you're not fulfilling your God-given role and duty. We have to come out and say, this thing is wicked, and we have to talk about it, regardless of what people think. That's what I'm doing right now. These people are wicked. That's why I'm so hard on the Jesuits. That's why I'm so hard on the Masons and things like that. Because these are the people that are molesting children. Doing it for ritual purpose. Doing it to warp their minds to turn them into atheists later on in life. You see? John chapter 7. I loved how it said too in our text back there in, in uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles 19, it talked about that uh, the Lord won't take any gifts, any bribes. Because that's what the whole system is about. Go to John chapter 7. See another verse here. You know, they, they get into all this stuff and they say, you know, the, the Masons, you know, this police department is bought and paid for by the Masons or by whoever and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But you see, judges that work for the Lord, you can't bribe us. I've turned down donations and things to the ministry before because I see it's coming from people and they're, I'm like going, okay, yeah, this is really weird. Now you can keep your money. I actually have a check right now I need to send back to a sex pervert that wrote to me. Just got to get around to doing it. Oh, I want to donate to your ministry and stuff. And hey, you ought to cover some things. Yep. I don't think so. John chapter 7. Some weird people out there. I'll tell you what. John 7 verse 24 says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Okay. Hey, brother, you can't judge that guy. He's a police officer. He's an officer of the law. I don't care what his appearance is. Judge, righteous judgment. Is he a good police officer? Is he here to uphold the law? Is he a terror to good works or to evil? We'll talk about that here in a little bit. I'm going to judge him according to righteous judgment. There are good police officers out there. I'm not condemning all police officers. Absolutely not. There are police officers out there that are doing a good job. And, you know, sir, sure, I mean... Follow those, no problem. But uh, don't just say, well, he's in law or they're in politics or they're, they don't look like they're good people. They're working with mental health things and whatever else. Um, you know, I shouldn't judge them. Wrong. Wrong. You ought to be very careful about that stuff. And let me just say this quickly too, this thing about this mental health thing. Again, uh, they'll put children into special needs programs and things like that. That's another classic way that they'll molest children. And that way, then if the child comes out and says, hey, that teacher did something bad, they go, oh, he's just got a problem. He's just a little, you know, he's just kind of slow, ADHD or, you know, um, what's the autistic and things like this. Yeah. I mean, get your, get your children out of the public school system, okay, if you're out there. My word. You know, it's crazy.
Go back to Psalm 37. I'm giving you the scriptures today uh, whereby Christians can judge things. I mean, who else on, on this earth has more of a right to judge than those that are born again? Oh, well, brother, we don't have the powerful connections. God isn't a powerful connection. Think about it, brethren. And that's a challenge to all of us. I'm challenging myself with this whole study, too. You know, I mean, this this is something I, I couldn't sleep about this. I was up, I actually wrote the sermon notes at uh, 2.30 in the morning. The one time, woke up middle of the night and was like, I got to go do the sermon notes. Lord, put these scriptures in my mind. Very important. Psalm 37, verse 27, we'll start there. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Tongue talketh of judgment. Verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. What we read about. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Hmm. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord, he is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them, he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in him. Do you believe the book? Do you want power as a Christian? Do you want power to stop these dirty pedophiles and these dirty perverts and things out there? You see the formula? It's the Bible. You know, back when this country, when this was the only book, Christians had power, they had influence. This is the only one that was readily accepted. You know, the uh, revised version came in in 1901. And it was just like, you know, get that thing out of here. The Westcott and Hort Devil version over in 1881, you know, over there in England. And they came out and they were, oh, the King James is, you know, not as accurate as our revised version and all this stuff. That was the first real new version that was based on the Vatican's readings and, st and stuff that was there going back through centuries and centuries. It's, it's old. It's not new readings. And they came out with this thing and Christians were just like, yeah, right, whatever. But see, textual criticism kept going and going and going and going. And pretty soon the Christians just didn't want to say anything about it because it's too controversial. And so the minority prevailed through Jesuitical sophistry and Jesuit influence and infiltration into the seminaries and things like that. Yeah. Christians need to get back to the power of believing this book. And all these people that come out and they'll mock you. Oh, you're King James only. Oh, you're this, you're that. Ha, 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 ha. See, they don't want you to have the power of God's Word. They don't want you to have the power of God's promises. They don't like the sword of the Spirit. Psalm 76. I have seen this, this book, brethren. I've seen things happen with this book. I've gotten in confrontations with people professing Christians over this book. And uh, I saw one the one time. He openly denied this book in front of me. And I was just like, okay, you denied the book. And laughed at me and stuff. Within a month, uh, he had a heart attack. His mother died. Son had to be committed to drug rehab. Professing Christian. I had another guy the one time uh, denied this book. And I believe this book is God's Word. And I present it that way. This is God's book right here. You don't mess with it. Ah, it's not perfect. It's not God's Word. Within 24 hours, his wife handed him divorce papers. And that divorce went on for another, I think it was like five years. And he ended up a broken, financially broken, just 
you know, wasted. You don't mess with the book. There's power in these pages. And when Christians start to believe the promises that God wrote to us in His Word, you'll get that power back. Believe you me. God will take care of things for you. Psalm 76, verses 7 through 9. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Remember what we read earlier about it's better for him to, that a millstone be hanged about his neck and drown in the depth of the sea? God gets angry when little children are messed with. Verse 8. Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth. Selah. Hmm. To save the meek of the earth? Who's more meek than a little child? God arose to judgment. You want power? I'm telling you how to get it. So I'm going to get a good lawyer. I'm going to find a lawyer that's uh, going to go through the court system and we're going to have justice done and stuff like this. You're kidding yourself. You are kidding yourself. Psalm 103, verse 6. The Lord executeth righteousness and, righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Do you believe that? Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you see, brethren, do you believe in God or don't you? And that's a challenge to all of us. I'm not sing singling out the sister that wrote the letter to me. I'm not singling anybody out. I'm just saying, hey, examine yourself. I have to examine myself. I look at that thing, and the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Do I believe that God can fix up this mess? Something about it. Okay, it's something about this whole thing is what I was going to say. Romans chapter 13. What can we do? Can we go to the law about this? That depends. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. All right. Well, then we must be totally 100% subservient to the government in all cases, no matter what. Right? Wrong. Keep reading. Every preacher, it's so funny. I've heard this thing preached in so many different Babel buildings. The Babel buildings are extension of the, extensions of the federal government. If they're 501c3, you are literally in a federal structure there. That's why they have to get the government's permission to do everything. Uh, when you go, when you get a license from the government, we're going to talk about this more as we continue. Anytime you get a license for the, from the government, they're giving you a license and they're taking things from you in exchange like your freedom, all right? You go to a church building that's under the 501c3 thing, you are in a government structure. Run away from those places. Don't go near them, okay? But every single one I've ever been in, and that's, by the way, when you go through the marriage thing, the state marriage license and all that stuff, again, government giving you a marriage license whereby they can control your marriage and the offspring of that marriage. Talk more about that in a little bit. But when you're there, that's why a lot of times you'll hear uh, you know, um, at the end of the ceremony, the, the preacher will say, um, and now by the power invested in me by the state of Pennsylvania, I now pronounce you man and wife. They're state institutions. But every single time I've been to one of these places and they talk about Romans 13, they will read verses 1 and 2 and skip down to verse 5. They'll never read verses 3 and 4. I've seen this thing happen. But let's look at verses 3 and 4. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. The rulers that you submit yourself to as a Christian are the ones that are a terror to evil and not to good. If they are a terror to good, if they're covering up for child molesters and stuff like this, you don't submit to them for one second. Not for one second. You say, are you serious? I am dead serious. 
some pervert comes with one of these hexagram badges on with a little child molester pedophile symbols on each of the points except for the very bottom one and he looks and he says uh, we're going to need you to bring your children out here right away you say no I know about your symbol there you're not going to touch my children I stand under the authority of Almighty God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will protect me from you because I understand you're a pervert that badge there is a perverted thing and you're running a pedophile cult right like that and you stand back and you see what God will do see we've gotten so far away from that from that power that we once had now I'll tell you what you say well then we can't get it back yes you can yes you can you say well we have to become uh, special private citizens of English common law and whatever here's your English common law right here brethren you believe in this book we fight things spiritually I'm telling you it works there are stories of old time preachers and things that uh, people try to kill them you know and they'd preach and they'd say Lord's gonna take care of you there was a J Frank Norris uh, right here J Frank Norris this guy here was incredible there was a case where uh, a lot of the businessmen including uh, the guy who founded Bush beer and um, I think it was Bush beer and uh, he actually came out in August Bush was a guy's name and he said he hired like the best lawyers in the country and he said I want you to destroy J Frank Norris ended up August Bush J Frank Norris they couldn't do anything to him August Bush killed himself another case J Frank Norris was coming out speaking against the alcohol interests in, in his area and one of these guys said I'm gonna kill you and whatever else I'm gonna I'm gonna get you killed and J Frank Norris was like no you're not the Lord's gonna protect me that alcohol Baron, this guy that was making all this money from alcohol, going someplace, and his driver pulled, went to go across train tracks. I guess didn't see the train coming. Train broadsided it and smashed that car. And that guy that was in there with his rich, you know, his, his uh, wife or whatever else, just smashed them all over the tracks. The police showed up, and there was a bottle of whiskey that that driver, or that the rich alcohol baron guy had had, and it was laying there. Had part of the guy's brain in it little piece of his brain matter floating in that whiskey and this police officer showed it to J. Frank Norris and J. Frank Norris took that thing and he preached a sermon about it <laughs> and he was holding it up during the sermon you know what do you call that power spiritual power you see you get back to believe in the book and you say I believe what God's Word says and you people are perverts and I know I can't go through your little system to try and prosecute you then I'm gonna go with the power of the scriptures to bring you people down to bring you wicked people down I'm gonna see justice done on you and I'll tell you right now a lot of these people that look like they're getting away with murder when the rapture happens God's gonna say okay now I got you you know why because the children are leaving I firmly believe that I believe all the children under the age of accountability probably under 10 years old I believe they're going at the rapture gonna be disappearing and the Lord's gonna say okay to all you little perverts down there you pedophiles and things now I'm gonna have my way with you that's why you see one judgment one judgment in the book of Revelation one-third of all people on the earth dead just like that how could God be so cruel we maybe ought to wake up to the reality of the real world and see about the child molesters and the satanic ritual abuse and all the other stuff that goes on and gets covered up and covered up and covered up God's got special plans for him and if you're one of them God's got special plans for you unless you repent if you're even able to anymore I question it when you get to that point of where you're molesting children I question if somebody like that can come back I really question that let's go to Ecclesiastes back to the Old Testament you know oh he's in the Old Testament the Old Testament there's such God is so cruel in the Old Testament well you know read the book of Revelation sometime you're gonna see that God's a lot more cruel in the book of Revelation than he is in the Old Testament seven years of God's wrath being poured out and it's gonna be poured out on these perverts that are out there in the world that look like they're getting away with things right now 
Ecclesiastes chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 8. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. The highest authority in the land is not the judges or the lawyers or the politicians or the president of the United States or whatever else. Do you think Donald Trump cares about children being molested? You're crazy. You think he's going to do something about it? <laughs> Are you kidding me? He rose to the top because he's a scum bucket, just like all the others. He's Jesuit educated. You think he's going to stand against the Jesuits? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a Republican. He must be able to. Yeah, I don't think so. No, the highest authority in the land is Almighty God. Are you connected to Almighty God? You know, for years and years and years, people have been trying to shut this channel down. I know that. I've been told that. I've had people in the military and things tell me, special operations people tell me, brother, you're on a list. I know. I know. I know my life is constantly being threatened and stuff. I've, I've been attacked through different means and things like that. Uh, yeah, I'm aware of it. You say, well, then how are you continuing to go? How are you continuing to, to continue on and why are you still alive? Why is this channel still on YouTube? One reason. God my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. He's going to protect me. He's going to preserve me. Doubt it not. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There is coming a judgment someday. You know, you read about in the book of Acts, Paul standing before the politicians of his day, Felix, and Paul reasons of temperance, righteousness, and judgment, I think it is, judgment to come. And it says, Felix trembled. Christians a lot of times don't realize the power that they have when they're Bible believing. We kind of just take it for granted because, you know, we're humble. You know, we, we humble ourselves before the Lord and, and, and it's just like, I'm just a wicked old sinner. I can't believe God saved me. And, you know, you don't think of yourself as a great person. You know, don't get prideful. You shouldn't. But the whole point is we're God's children. We're part of the body of Christ. There is spiritual power that we have far more than we realize. And there's a lot more on tap there, too, so to speak, that you can discover as you go through the life of sanctification as a Christian. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. You know, I mean, the Bible talks about uh, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection being made, you know, and the, and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. The way you get more power as a Christian is believing the book and going through and sanctifying your life, getting things out of your life that are causing you know, can cause stumbling blocks to other believers and that can can put you out of fellowship with the Lord. And the Lord will be patient. He will be long-suffering. He will go through this time. I mean, He just doesn't go, okay, here's a big list, you know, 200 things that have to change in your life. I'm going to give you three hours to do it. No, the Lord's going to, He's going to lead you along and He's going to say, okay, that goes. You're going to wait a little bit. This goes. A little bit. This goes. The more you do for the Lord, the more you believe His book, the more power, spiritual power, you're going to have. Okay? And your duty, fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Okay? It doesn't mean you keep His commandments just to be saved or merit salvation or something like that. All right? But the important part of this passage here is verse 14. For God shall bring into work ev in, shall, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. These secret societies with all the stuff that they're doing, they're going to be judged someday. They think that they're getting away with it right now. And again, if you're a victim of this thing and you go, I just don't understand and think, understand something. Whatever they've done to you, they will be judged someday for that. Don't you go through that same judgment that's coming upon them. Don't live your whole life rejecting Jesus Christ because you're bitter at God because bad things happened. No, say, 
God, I'm coming to you because I want to see your judgment upon those wicked people that hurt me in the past. That's the way the thing works. Romans chapter 1. You can't go through the courts. That's what I'm trying to say. You can't go out and, and physically shoot one of these police officers or something that's been involved in the child molestation if they molested you when you were little. You're not going to help the cause at all. You go through the spiritual. See? That's how you get something done. Romans chapter 1 verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Sodomy, in other words, like the letter we were reading about there. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, judgment of God, you know, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Their judgment is coming, in other words. Continuing to chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 here. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doeth the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest this... Thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now you go through these verses, and something you're going to notice about the Word of God, you will go through scriptures and you'll say, wow, that's really good, this means such and such. Then you go through something else in your life and you come back to those same scriptures and you go, you know what, it can apply to that too. And you go through something else, hey, that can apply to this too. You're going to see that there are multiple applications for scriptures in the Bible. It's, it's, this book is such a, such a depth to it. It's amazing. But notice here it says, that thou, uh, and, that, and thinkest thou this, verse 3, chapter 2, verse 3, O man that, ju that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Nobody escapes the judgment of God. Not me, not you. You say, wait, brother, I, I thought you were saved. Well, that's true. I'll escape the judgment of God in terms of heaven and hell. I'm going to go to heaven. I don't get the judgment there that sends me to hell. But I still have to go through the judgment seat of Christ, as do you if you're a Christian. We're still going to be judged by God, right? But my judgment is going to be my works are judged, right, to see what rewards I'm going to have in eternity. All right, so it's a good judgment. It's going to be a little bit scary. So, you know, see how much of what I did is just going to be burned up in the fire, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you can read about it. But the point is, everybody goes through the judgment. Make sure that you're going through the right one. Again, if you're a victim, if you're saying, hey, I went through this thing and, and this is terrible and, and you're getting angry towards God, why would you let this happen to me? No, 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 no. God gives man free will. The offenses must needs come, but woe to the man by whom the offense cometh. We read at the beginning of this portion of where we're reading through the Bible, Matthew chapter 18. The offenses will come. There will be sex perverts. There will be murderers. There will be other things. But woe to that man, you see, by whom that offense cometh. God's going to take care of them. He's going to punish them. They will not escape the judgment of God. So don't be bitter towards God over something bad that happened because somebody else is exercising their free will that they had. No, you come to God and you say, okay, God, please save me. And then you let him judge the crimes that have been done to you in your past. Very important. 1 Peter chapter 4. And again, you know, I realize a lot of people are going to be like, this study's too long. I'm not going to listen to the whole thing. It's too much work. Then you're not going to have judgment. See? You need to go through the scriptures. You need to understand what the Bible says. You want the power of God's 
great weapon here. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, <clears throat> to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of what shall the end uh, be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Excuse me. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Okay. Again, how do we begin the judgment? We just go out there and we condemn the wicked and stuff like that. Well, that's there. But we also have to be self-judging. And we have to judge the house of God. It must begin there. So people that call themselves Christians, we judge there first and we get people sorted out and we say okay now let's get unified let's have one book let's have people and they, why use the niv i don't think that there's anything wrong okay well you're not part of the group then okay go away <laughs> you can use your vatican version that has no power no spiritual power we don't want your help okay um well i i like to to listen to contemporary christian rock uh, well what's rock music rock and roll is a euphemism for fornication in the back seat of a car according to their own writings. Okay, you can study the, the whole history of rock and roll music. You can't make a Christian. See, you purge out the leaven, you see. You judge the house of God. You judge those people that you associate with, the Christians that you're having to pray and things like that for you. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Why? So that you can have the power to judge the wickedness out there in the world. Clean your life up, you see. Second Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 through 9. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. These uh, fake preachers out there and stuff that are in it for the money, don't worry about it. God's got their number. Okay? Their uh, judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Don't think they're getting away with it. Verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. Okay, remember what we read earlier? Way back in uh, um, Genesis there, where it talked about, uh, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? That's what's going on here. Talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 7. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Look at verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God knows what he's doing. So I just don't understand. They're getting away with murder out there. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're absolutely not. And by the way, if you think that these people that are involved in this satanic ritual abuse stuff, if you think that they have peace in their minds, uh, again, you're mistaken. They're tormented. You know, all of them, they're, not, they're not dead. They haven't gotten in trouble for their crimes yet. They're, uh, they're living a nightmare. I'll tell you that. And most of them are going to die and go to hell and burn for all of eternity. So what's bad now it's going to be worse, even worse after death. Don't worry about it. God's going to take care of it. 
Remember that that judgment begins in your own life, in my own life. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. You know, I, I just was watching the prof some prophecy news update thing the other day, and, and uh, they came out and they said some university is charging people now with transphobia. And I just, I just started laughing. I just busted up laughing. I was just like, this is getting so absurd. <laughs> I mean, it's just so stupid. You say, well, Brother Brian, you, sh you should be really, really careful of what you say on your channel. They could shut you down. They aren't going to touch this channel until the Lord gives them permission. They aren't going to touch me. They aren't going to touch my wife. They won't certainly won't touch my little boy unless the Lord gives them permission. And I'm going to clean up my life, and I'm going to get myself right with the Lord. I'm going to judge myself, you see. I'm not going to let them just come in and just do whatever they want. God is my protector my Savior, Jesus Christ. He's my protector, and He's a judge of the wicked. And what they're doing, I'll abhor what they're doing. And I have no mercy for those people either. If I ever out in public or something, and some pervert tries to molest my child, my little boy, I'm going to kill him. Why? If I'm out in the woods and some bear tries to attack my little child, my son, I'm going to kill the bear. Why would it be okay for that and not okay to kill somebody that's coming and trying to hurt my child? Some guy tries to rape my wife or something like that? I'm just going to stand back and say, well, I'll let the law take care of it. No. No. We need to stand strong with this thing and say, hey, there's a line to draw here. There's a line in the sand and you don't cross it. Jump down to verse 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Is it possible? Well, usually. God will protect you. I mean, I've seen situations. The one time we had to go to... Uh, down south of here, and we're driving and stuff, and we're driving down the highway, you know. Route 95 goes down from Holton down to Bangor, and we're driving down Route 95, and it's like, there's like police cars all over the place. And we're going, huh, that's something. And, <laughs> and there's like police cars in the, you know, the, the they'll have lanes between the, the highway, you know, where you can like, you know, emergency personnel can drive in there and go back and whatever else. And, you know, we're driving, there's like police staked out, and they're like outside their vehicles with guns and stuff. And I'm like going, I wonder what's going on. We're just putting along, you know, driving by it all. Found out later on there was some nut driving around up and down the highway and around Holton area and stuff, just shooting people at random. We're driving right through the area. Never saw anything. Never had a bullet whiz past us or anything else. God just protected us. Yeah. God will preserve your life. God will judge the wicked that are around you. He'll protect you, you see. I don't have any plans to go out and hurt anybody. I have no plans to go kill anybody, whatever else. I hope I never meet one of these perverts, and I hope nothing ever bad happens. But if it does, and I have to take care of the situation, I know my God's going to protect me. See? You say, but uh, some things have happened to me. I'm a victim of child abuse and whatever else and things. Okay, then these verses are for you. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That is saying there that you as a Christian should do good for people. But there's a line to draw there. This text is not talking about somebody coming and actually trying to kill you. You don't say, well, here's a cookie. Eat this before you murder me or something. No, it's not talking about that. Obviously, there's a line to draw there. But when you're dealing with people that are very evil and they're very wicked, 
um, you're not going to be able to go and take vengeance on them. Just stand back and let God do that. I mean, if it's, an, if it's an, a situation where they're there, they're coming, they're going to do bad, and you can do something to fight them off or whatever you have to do and you end up having to kill them as a result, that's fine. That's fine. And I know probably people are going to cut this video up now and say, I'm threatening to kill people. I'm not threatening to kill people. I'm, threat I'm saying, you know, I was almost said threatening. You know, I'm saying defend yourself. Defend your children. Defend those family members that you love and things. Okay, that's fine. Self-defense here. I'm not saying be aggressive and go out and murder people. Where I'm not saying that at all. If anybody puts that in a video that cuts my little thing, you're a liar. God's going to judge you. Okay? We are supposed to do good. And the best thing that you can do as a Christian is live according to this book. There's power in this book. So I'm going to give you some practical steps to save your children and to protect them. Number one, are you saved? You say, well, I'm a Christian. I go to church. I didn't say that. I said, are you saved? Are you born again? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Can you point to a time in your life where you came to the Lord as a broken sinner and you can say, yeah, my life really changed after that event? I didn't say you're going to be sinlessly perfect. You're going to get, get that thing put on me all the time. I don't teach that. I have sermons against sinless perfection. You know, but uh, can you point to a time when you got saved? You say, yes, I can. Okay. Do you believe the Bible? King James Bible. Don't mess with the other ones. They're false. That's also very important. Now, let's get into some practical steps here. Those are the most important steps, but let's talk about some practical steps to get your children away from this uh, system. Number one, I suggest divorcing the state. And again, this is some stuff you're going to have to do a little bit of research on your own. I'm not an expert in this stuff. You know, I personally, when I got married, we never went for a state marriage license. Uh, we have a marriage coverture, okay, which is a old law type of a thing and whatever else. Um, you know, it's it's just, you know, again, you got to get into this thing. I can't get into a big discussion of it right now. But we do not have a state marriage license. You say, well, how do you file your taxes? Uh, I don't, in terms of saying that I'm married and I have children and things. I don't want any government favors for being married and for having children. Okay? Why? The system's corrupt. Show me anywhere in Scripture where it says that we're to let the government tell us what to do about marriage. But you see, when you go with a marriage, state marriage license, what you're doing is you're saying to the government, you're coming to them and saying, can I have your permission to do something that God told me to do? That's wrong. And as a result, they get control of your marriage and of your children through the state marriage license. So I would divorce the state. Go in and say, we're getting a divorce. Get rid of your state marriage license and then do it the biblical way, say marriage coverture. And again, I can't do all the stuff. I can't do all the research for people. You're going to have to get into this yourself and, and look for ways to get out of the system. But the whole thing is there are so many man-made systems that are snares to catch Christians and the best thing that you can do is just walk away from it and say, I'm not doing it. Well, you should fill out this paper. I'm not filling out your papers. I know what the Bible says. I will submit myself to laws of the land that are good and in line with Scripture. But other things that are there that you're overstepping your bounds, you're a terror to good works. Therefore, I'm not, you're not one of God's ministers that I'm supposed to follow. Divorce the state. Number two. Take your children out of the public school system. Take them out. Get them out of there. Say, well, Brother Brian, do you want solutions? I'm telling you. Nobody, you read through the entire Bible, not one time is there one verse of Scripture that says anything about anybody but you teaching your children. Nobody has the right to teach your children except for you. But I could get in trouble. In trouble with who? The state or with God Almighty? Can God protect you? That's the question. You say, well, well how can I get uh, my children out of the system but still get the government's favors through tax returns and stuff like that? No, you don't do it that way. Take your children out and then the government has no rights over your children. And you don't ask for their money. 
And I know the systems of control are getting much, much worse. I know all that stuff and whatever else. But I believe, I don't care what the situation or where you're at and whatever else, I believe the Lord can guide you and get you away from this whole system and say, I'll protect you and I'll protect, protect your children. Okay, you say, well, brother, it's really bad in my area. Okay, there's another solution. Move. Move. Get away from the area. Um, if it's such a bad thing and I'm in Los Angeles County area and stuff like that, I wouldn't live in an area like that, to be quite frank with you. Um, you know, you say, well, you know, uh, well, what am I supposed to do about my job? I got a good job. I have, I'm almost going to retire. Desperate times call for desperate measures, all right? If it's a pedophile ring and, the, and it's that bad and you're just like, okay, I can't even hide from this stuff, get out of the area, okay? Remember what God said with Lot. He's like going to Lot, you know, he's saying, hey, Get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on, come on. And Lot's going, oh, but you know, just, like, yeah. why? Because Lot's financial interests were in Sodom. That's where Lot's money was. He didn't want to leave. He was going to lose his career. And God finally said, out, get out. Lot's out there living in the wilderness. Do what you have to do to get away from it. Next, I would say, Fasting and prayer, definitely. Uh, fasting and prayer is extremely powerful. Um, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, the Bible says in the book of James. Um, you're going to need to pray hard if you know that this child molestation stuff is going on and your children are victims and you yourself were a victim and whatever. You're going to have to do some major praying and fasting is going to make those prayers even more powerful. Okay, Abstaining from meals and things like that, instead of eating, spend the time praying. Um, this is serious business. I mean, again, I talked about this thing of pornography years and years ago, the pornography epidemic study that I did many years ago. And I said, you know, if you have a pornography addiction, you have to take some very drastic steps if you want to fight that thing. And you do. You do. You absolutely do. Um, if there's child molestation in your area and you know what's going on and you know that your children are being victimized and whatever else, you're going to, have to take some very, very serious steps. You're going to have to make some very radical changes. And the Lord will stand with you. Right? I guarantee you that. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen when I really step out and I really do something for the Lord, the Lord will protect me. I mean, I've had so many situations where I should have died and the Lord has protected me. I mean, there have been literal supernatural miracles that I've seen things happen and, and it's just like, there's no other, other explanation. The Lord was there to protect me. The Lord has preserved this ministry. I had brothers and things that uh, had their own YouTube ministries and things and, and uh, they got shut down. I'm not saying it was because they were in sin or whatever else. It just, for whatever reason, I can't judge them. That's between them and the Lord. But, uh, you know, I've, I can honestly say that there's never been anything that I have been presented with that I have not talked about. Um, I'm careful. I choose some of my words, obviously. I don't want to incite people to go out. I'm not, please don't ever think I'm inciting anybody to do anything violent, you know, go start gunning down police officers. I am very much against that. But if I know for a fact that some CPS workers and they're coming with police and whatever else, and they're coming for my son, and they're not going to listen to any reasoning or whatever else, um, we're going to have a problem. I'm not going to let my son be raped and molested by a bunch of perverts, whether in the law or away from the law. It's not going to happen. Okay? I'll stand by the book. I know that there's power in this book. So that's going to be it. Um, I mean, this, this subject is, is so huge. I could just, I could talk for a couple hours on this thing. Uh, I have done quite a bit of research into this. It's been very, very disgusting. Again, you know, another big thing. Um, I don't even think these things are still available. I bought these years and years ago from Ted Gunderson, and I know that there's different information on him. People say, oh, he's part of the whole deal. Ted Gunderson was a uh, retired FBI. Um, he was the head of the uh, Los Angeles FBI division as well as um, Dallas, Texas, and I forget the other one. Uh, but he, you know, he was high up in the FBI. He got out of you know, the FBI retired from it and he got into private investigative work and uh, 
that's when he started to find out about all this stuff. And he, uh, years ago, he had his own website and he was selling documentation and things. So I bought, there's four volumes of these things uh, right there. You know, uh, Ted Gunnerson's dead now. I don't know if he was ever saved or not. I have no idea. But the point is there's, I mean, I, I have the documents to prove this stuff. There was another case I'll tell you about real quickly that he talked about in here where there was a, uh, without getting into all the details, I mean, he has actually the police reports in here um, in one of these volumes. And it was a, it was a thing called the Finders. And uh, these, there were people that were essentially driving around the country taking pictures of children and then they had catalogs of this and they had wealthy clients and things that would want to, you know, have these children. And they'd pick, you know, I want a blonde haired, blue eyed boy or whatever of five years or younger, whatever. And they'd go through the albums and they'd say, which one do you want? And they'd pick one. And then these finders would go out and they'd kidnap the child. They'd look for a time to kidnap the child. And they'd bring them to the rich person and get the money and whatever. And they would ritualistically sacrifice them. This stuff goes on. Um, they, they basically, the Tallahassee Police Department found a van with some of these finders and they had a bunch of children that they were, you know, in the process of, they had abducted, abducted them, excuse me, and they were taking them someplace and they basically took the papers and stuff, the, some concerned people saw this, what was going on, so this looks really weird, called the Tallahassee Police Department, found papers on them that sent them back to a warehouse in Washington, D.C., where the uh, Metropolitan Police Department went out and did a raid on this warehouse. And they went in there and they found all these photo albums of these children's pictures. They found also video rooms where snuff films were being created. Um, again, I have to say this, I'm sorry, this is really grotesque stuff, but snuff films are child molestation films where the child is then killed. Uh, they're snuffed out, their life is snuffed out. Um, and you understand where this stuff comes from a man named Aleister Crowley wrote about it in some of his writings. The thing about sacrificing children leads to power and things. I mean, this is the reality of the world, brethren. This is why I get so ticked off sometimes and I'm yelling and hollering and, and all angry and people go, why is he so mad? Because I understand a lot of what's going on. Okay, I've studied the dark side of all this stuff that, that happens and things. That's why I read my King James Bible and it says, the whole world lieth in wickedness. And I'm going, yeah, absolutely, amen, you know. Uh, Jesus Christ is our only hope. Yeah, amen. You know, vain is the help of man. Yeah, amen. See, I understand these things. You know, and a lot of you do, haven't done the research, and I'm not saying to do it. I'm just simply saying, trust me. Okay, when I get ticked off about things, and I'm telling you, hey, stay away from this and stay away from that, it's because of research. I research. I don't just run my mouth. All right? But anyways, this Metropolitan Police Department, they're pulling out like trash bags of, of information. It's, it's in there. I got the files on it. And um, right during the investigation, the CIA shows up and they say, this whole case is dropped. All charges are going to be dropped and everything else. We're going to take over the investigation. Police reports. I got the police reports to prove it. You know, the satanic pedophile ring that is in this country is very powerful. And there's no possible way to fight this thing through the court system, through the system of law and whatever else. I mean, I literally, I was called up to jury duty when I was down in Pennsylvania the one time. And we sat there and they, they showed us this film about how the, the rights of the jury and all this other stuff. You're more powerful than the judge himself. And that the jury can, can uh, hang the, you know, the hung jury or whatever. And they can stop a corrupt judge from convicting an innocent person, this whole deal left that film thing and went in and we're sitting in the hall we're supposed to fill out this questionnaire and it says if the judge tells me to do something am i going to follow him or whatever else and you're supposed to answer yes or no i forget how the thing was worded and you're supposed to say yes and i'm going wait a second i thought we had jury nullification we can stop a corrupt judge and things but this questionnaire is telling me i can't the system is corrupt you see well i can get a good lawyer no you can't no you can't what is our hope? The book. The book. I think it was Horace Greeley said the one time, it is impossible to mentally or socially enslave a Bible-reading people. 
That's why the Catholic Church hates this book so much. We've got to get back to the Bible. This is the standard. This is where the power is at. And there's so many other stories we could go over with the whole thing of the satanic ritual abuse and all this whatever else. Brethren, there's danger out there. That's what I'm trying to get through here. And the only hope that you have is salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ and his book, the King James Bible. Okay? So I'm going to quit now. I can keep going on and on, but it's just incredible. So that is going to be it. Um, let's end with a word of prayer here. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, for your wrath and your judgment to be brought upon these wicked people out there that are doing horrible things, unspeakable acts to children. And I know that they're trying to get these um, after-school Satan clubs in and everything else, and they're glamorizing the writings of these monsters like Aleister Crowley and, and things. And uh, I just pray, Lord, for your judgment and your wrath. And uh, for the time that we have left, Lord, on this earth, I pray that you would help all of us to get serious about serving you and to do something um, to turn back some of this tide of evil for the time that we're here, that we would not be ashamed of, of speaking out about these things and not be afraid of what people think about us, but that uh, we would understand the power that comes from believing your word. And um, I just really do pray, Lord, for the Christians out there that you'd give all us all of us a backbone and help us all to, to speak boldly and not worry what man can do to us. And Lord, I just pray that uh, the rapture would happen soon, that the body of Christ would leave and the, the dear precious little children would leave with us and, and then your wrath and your fierce judgment would come upon this earth, Lord, and, and uh, you are so justified in what you're going to be doing to this planet, Lord. And I know we're getting close, Heavenly Father. And I just really pray that Perhaps today would be the day when we go to be with you. And I pray it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll say this in closing. Um, I've met some police officers, and I've talked to them, and um, they're not all bad. But if you're a police officer, and you're out there, and you're in one of these organizations where you know for a fact that... Uh, your fellow officers and your superiors are part of this system. Uh, I pray for a conviction that you would stand against this thing to the point where it costs you your job. I pray that you would step out and, and stay strong and say, you know what, I'm not going to bow down to this agenda. I pray for God to give you the courage to stand up and be a true officer of the law, to be a true minister of God. I got in a confrontation with a police officer. It's on video, uh, not me talking with him face to face. I didn't want to have a camera right there in front of him. They don't usually appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a situation where I was going to do that. But, but I talked to him. Trooper Quint, his name was, state police here in Maine. And I talked to him. And I explained to him Romans chapter 13. And I said, you know, the Bible says that uh, you're a minister of God to me for good. And I'm just trying to explain things and stuff like that. It was a very respectful exchange between myself and him. I have no idea where he stood with the Lord. Whatever. I can't say he saved, lost. I have no idea. But uh, he was there to enforce the law. And he was an honest man. Told me what to do. You know. To try and rectify the situation. And thankfully it did. Fix the situation. Because I stood up against a very evil thing. And if I find out that there's child molestation or something going on in this area with some people and whatever else, I'm going to stand against it. And I'm not going to fear what man can do to me. Okay? So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Please stand by God's written word.